Hello and welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. Today we're going to be talking about something really exciting and that is the introduction of visual calculations within Power BI. This is going to change the way that a lot of us write DAX and how much we have to write DAX on a daily basis. And it really does make a lot of the hard things that we used to have to do a lot easier. So we're going to take a look at how to do a three month calculation in this video. First, if you want to follow along, if you want to experience this new feature capability that exists, make sure to hit like and subscribe so you'll see new videos that come out. But also you need to be on the February 2024 version or later in order to get this feature. And you must also make sure to turn this on in the preview section of Power BI. So right here in this screen on preview features, we're going to go to preview features inside of your options and right here at the very bottom you're going to see visual calculations check that box click ok restart power bi desktop and then you're going to have the full capability of visual calculations available to you so let's jump in and take a look at what we want to accomplish today in this session or in the words of brian knight let's go so in this visual right here I want to return the last three months of data. In fact, let's filter this down to only 2007. And I want it to return the average. Now, averages are not easy. I'm going to show you how to write the average in DAX in a minute because I'm going to show you a little bit of a limitation with visual calculations. They are awesome. They are incredible. They are game changing. Make no doubt about it. And Microsoft is going to continue to improve on this technology. However, there are some limitations and those limitations will always exist to some degree, but I can already see where Microsoft can make some improvements in this tool to make it even better. So the first thing I want to do is I have a visualization here and I want to get the three month rolling average. So the first thing I'll do is right up here on the ribbon, I'm going to click on new calculation. So I'll click right there and that takes us to this new window here. And I don't want to dive and talk about every little nuance of visual calculations right now because I'm going to cover a lot of this as I do more videos on this. I'm looking forward to it. I have an upcoming Learn with the Nerds event live with Pragmatic Works going to be live on our YouTube channel. Make sure to look for that and subscribe to that. And I'm also going to be releasing a class that covers everything, all the optional parameters, the limitations, the full capability of this very soon in the next couple of months on the Pragmatic Works On Demand Learning Channel. So stay tuned for that as well. But we'll get into all the nuts and bolts of this. If you wanna see what's available, you can click the little FX icon right there. And this gives you a really good idea of what you can do. And I'm gonna be exploring a lot of this in this series. But today, moving average, moving average. When I pull in the moving average, a lot of times I don't really do it, I just kinda of type it. Uh, but when I pull in this moving average, you'll notice that the first parameter is an expression. If you're familiar with the calculate function, that's the first parameter of calculate. And it's always, always, always a, a measure that already exists. And so I want to use this measure right here, which is total cell. So when I click the open square bracket, notice that the only thing I can see is what's in this visual. That's it. I'm not able to see any other measures that are in my model. That's very, very important to understand. This is the way it's designed. It is designed to be contained within this visual to make the DAX easy. And I'm going to show you the alternative to this to solve the problem and the limitation in just a moment. So we're going to bring in total sales. And then I'm going to tell it I want to go back three windows. That's it. Now, there are some optional parameters here. I love, I love to test things out. I love to click the buttons. When it says advanced, I like to click on it and say, what does this do? That's how you learn. I've been playing around with all of these optional parameters and I've done some really cool stuff. And we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into that in some of the future videos that I do. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited for it. So stay tuned. But for this video, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to say, hey, let's go back three. I hit enter and look at that. Oh, that was so beautiful. Anybody could do this, right? I could bring my nine year old daughter in here. I could teach her to do this. This is a great job by Microsoft. I absolutely love this feature and there's lots more that you can do and I know they're going to continue to improve this. However, however, there's one thing that kind of throws me off a little bit with this visual. If you notice right here, we have this 
let me go ahead and uh, zoom back out because I was trying to do the zoom in while I was already zoomed in. You'll notice right here how the number is exactly the same for July. July is 473,000 and the moving average is 473,000. That's a little bit off to me because what it's doing is it, it it's not like a regular measure where you're changing the filter context and you're actually able to see. In fact, let's go back out here where we have our filter. Let's put our filter in place. Let's look at it here. This is a little bit better. So I have a filter up here on 2007 and right here, notice how the numbers are identical. That's not really what I would expect. What I would expect when I'm looking at January of 2007 is I would expect the moving average to be November of 2006, December of 2006, and then January of 2007. But that's not what it's doing. The only thing that this visual calculation can see is what's in the table. So it's not able to see those previous months. That's not available to it. And so for me, I don't love this. Uh, there's something that I think Microsoft can do to make this better by exposing some rows and then allowing you to hide rows like you can hide columns, but a little bit of a limitation here. However, it isn't that bad, um, but that is something I wanted to point out. If I go back to 2006 and I highlight two and we go back down to January, you will notice that it's no longer the same here. Why is it no longer the same? Because this is now properly reflecting the average for the last three months. Now, Mitchell, I really need it to be the last three months and we always filter down to the current year. What is my alternative to this? Well, right now, the alternative is we got to go back to DAX. So let's take a look at the crazy gnarly DAX I would have to write to fix this problem. And I'm going to do this very, very quickly here. I write this a different way all the time, but I write these measures like this all the time. So I'm going to create a new measure and we're going to call this one three month sales average. Okay, we'll keep it very simple here and then I'll go ahead and zoom in. All right, so three month sales average. The first thing that I need to do is I'm gonna be using calculate to effectively change the filter context. We didn't have to do that before, but now we do. I'm going to summarize. In fact, let me just go ahead and tab in. I'm gonna summarize the date table. And from the date table, I want to return all of the months within the filter context that I'm going to define. And I think month is English month name, there we go. And then let me go ahead and add my filter from calculate, which defines that wherever I'm at in the filter context. So if I'm in March, I want to return March. What is it? I would return January, February, March, right? If I'm in February, I want to return February, January and, to, and December of the last year. So that's what I'm going to accomplish here with this filter. So I'm going to come in here and uh, I could use dates between, I think dates in period would be a little cleaner. So I'm going to do dates in period and then I'm gonna pass in the date column from my date table here. Whoops, see if I can get that right. I'm gonna go, what is it, start date is first. So I always start with the last date, it's easier, and then I go negative to go back. If this looks complicated, that's because this is what we have to do without visual calculations. I'm gonna go minus three, and then I'm gonna go back three months. And there's probably a little bit, maybe a cleaner, faster way to write this, but I'm just kind of doing this on the fly to show you the difference. now. This is going to return a table expression. I can't hit enter right now because I'll actually get an error because that's a table. So now I have to turn that into a scalar value. And what I want to do is say, all right, for each month that's in the filter context. So when I'm looking at October, you would actually see three months in the filter context. You'd see August, September, and October because that's what I've defined. And now what I want to do is say, go get the total sales for each month and then get the average of that. So I'm going to use a function. My favorite functions, all the DAX, I love them the average X function. I love X functions. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to type average X open parenthesis. And for each row that's in that virtual table that I just created, I'm going to return the total cells and then we're going to get the average. And so let me look over this one time, calculate average X that I think that's good. I think it's good. Let's check it out. See how we did here. I'm not going to bother formatting it. We're just going to put this in our report. Let's check that and then X that out. Let's throw that right there. And yes, this is beautiful. It's crazy. It's crazy DAX. I know it. I write this every single day, helping customers on virtual mentoring calls. I love it. I love DAX. I'm probably in the very minority here. But if you look at this right here, you'll notice that the difference between my DAX calculation, which has to take in Filter context has to consider a lot of other things is different, but it, in my opinion, is correct. 
Once you get to the third month though, it's gonna work. It's gonna work all the way down. And so this is a tiny limitation. It really is. It, it, it's a tiny limitation. It's not that big of a deal, but it, it's something we should point out. If you're building a report, I don't want you to build the report, knock it out, put it out there and see level executives come back to you and they're like, whoa, this is wrong. And you're like, uh, I didn't know. You should at least know that and be able to explain it and say, this is what we're gonna get. Um, again, there's some small limitations like this that I've noticed with visual calculations, but by no means does it take away from this capability. This is really awesome. It's exciting. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more videos and we're already helping customers with this technology. We really are. It's, it's really cool what you can do. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. We look forward to hearing from you in the future and enjoy.